I'm a member of Students Supporting Israel at Columbia University. In one BBC interview, you stated that you cannot even mention that in the Holocaust, it was not six million Jews who were killed. You also said you are proud to be labeled anti-Semitic in your own blog post. In partnership with the YIVO Institute of Holocaust Studies, Columbia University is a world center of Jewish studies. When you come to a place like Columbia, this kind of remark makes you either brazenly provocative or astonishingly ignorant. Please address and clarify your standing on the Holocaust. Thank you. I'm exercising my right to free speech. Why is it that I can't say something against the Jews when a lot of people say nasty things about me, about Malaysia, and I didn't protest, I didn't demonstrate. Well, we have to be willing to listen to views which are not uh, in our favor because of free speech. Free speech is about free speech. When you say, no, you cannot say this, you cannot be anti-Semitic, then there is no more free speech. Who, the, who determine these numbers? Uh, if it is uh, somebody who is in favor, you get uh, one figure. Somebody who is against, you get another figure. So I accept that there was a Holocaust, that there were many Jews killed. And in fact, at one time, I was very sympathetic towards them during the war, when you were not around. But I was around at that time. And we were very... Your grandmother was the Holocaust, so she was around. Okay, thank you. I think I've seen enough. Well, joining us live now is that Columbia student who you just saw stand up and ask that challenging question to Prime Minister Mohammed. Welcome, Romy Ronan. Thank you. All right, good to have you with us, Romy. What was the response after you asked that question in terms of the crowd, the people in the hall? Well, the room seemed to be strange. The responses weren't necessarily loud or outspoken. People were very quiet about it. Actually, one of my Jewish friends cried after that response, and she wanted to leave, but they wouldn't but, let but her. Was there any pushback? Was there any booing? Here you have a prime minister defending himself being an anti-Semite. Did he get any kind of pushback from the crowd or from the moderator? Absolutely not. The moderator didn't say a word. In fact, she encouraged it to just end, and the crowd didn't say anything. In fact, they were laughing, taking videos, rolling their eyes. And to be clear, this was a Columbia history professor who was moderating this panel and didn't choose to correct the prime minister or push back in any way. So look, Romy, we have the prime minister of Malaysia who has called Jews hooked nose in the past, yes. that they rule the world by proxy. His quotes, he's disputed that six million Jews were killed in the Holocaust. And there he is defending his anti-Semitism to you, saying it's my right to free speech. What do you think the response would have been had it been someone else who has made racist comments against the black community or the LGBTQ community and saying, hey, it's my right to be racist, it's free speech. Do you think there would have been a different response from the crowd? Absolutely, I think that in this day and age, the response would have been an uproar, except here it was silence. And I really don't understand it myself, but yes, it would have been absurd. Why do you think that is? Why do you think there is seemingly more tolerism for anti-Semitism than any other form of bigotry or racism? I agree with that, and I think that especially on Columbia's campus, that's exactly the issue. I don't know why, but I think that in this day and age, that's the issue, and that's what we're fighting for. I'm in a group called Students Supporting Israel at Columbia University, and this is what we fight for every day, to make sure that anti-Semitism does not happen, and to defend Israel in any way possible. Look, I'm a proponent of free speech, and I do believe that colleges should allow speakers from across the range, across the spectrum, to come and speak. But you do have this double standard where you have certain people that are affiliated more with the right, like Milo Yiannopoulos, for example, and Colter banned from college campuses. Students say the reason is they felt unsafe. They want a safe space. So, so how did you feel in terms of safety? What about your safety? How did you feel to have this particular speaker on campus? Well, I felt completely unsafe, and my friend who was crying that wanted to leave, she felt unsafe too. I think it makes the 10,000 Jews on our campus feel unsafe when a speaker like this comes in and is blatantly anti-Semitic, and it's just disgusting. But did those 10,000 Jews do anything to protest him speaking? Well, students supporting Israel did. We sent 
a letter along with REA and J Street to other groups on campus. I'm not sure about the 10,000 Jews, I can't speak for that, but of course we defended it. Of course we didn't want him to speak. Now, the people in the room, let's say the Jewish students, didn't say anything. It was complete silence, and to that I cannot speak. I have no idea why. But that is what happened, and anti-Semitism absolutely cannot be accepted anymore, especially on Columbia's campus. All right, well, we thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. Romy Ronan, appreciate it. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. All right.